ActiveX controls. Now, I'll tell you, I don't actually like ActiveX controls all that much, but they're still used, and folks still use them. Now, we're on the Developer tab here, and you see that I'm at this Insert um, this insert button, the form controls are on top. Of course, this is where Oz was putting those radio buttons. But then we also have this other group of controls down below that are a little, uh, let's say, heavier weight, whereas these are lightweight controls. These are heavier ones. So you've seen these before. I'm going to draw an ActiveX control here. Um, and the advantage to ActiveX is that you can have, you know, instead of just having a click that goes to a macro, you can handle double clicks, all this extra stuff. So I think they're preferred for that reason. And a lot of workbooks have been reliant on them. Now, not long ago, Microsoft uh, had a um, update to Excel, and it broke a lot of these. And I think a lot of people, some people didn't get the update. Uh, I think it was in December. Some people are just now getting the update uh, as their work computers are finally being updated because they never flip them off because you know how that is. You flip them off, and then there's a million updates, and then finally they get flipped off. But if you do have these problems, I'm going to just show you here. Uh, Microsoft has a fix. So um, if you see this ActiveX problem, cannot insert object, um, and many people, uh, I know Kevin was talking about this before the show, have reached out to him. Folks did reach out to me when this was going on. Uh, there is a support article, and what I think we'll do is uh, we'll add this link to our website because, you know, Microsoft being smart as they are, they didn't give us a good semantic link here. They gave us a whole bunch of gobbledygook. But if you do want to search it, you can search that. Cannot insert uh, uh, object error in ActiveX. And here you will find several solutions that will help solve the problem. Um, the main solution that is often presented is deleting. So you, I don't know if you can see here because the type is so small. It actually looks like, um, you know, it looks like my old. You guys cannot see the browser screen. It didn't look like that popped up. So I'm just gonna show you. So this is what I was talking about. Um, I don't think that popped up. So we'll add the link here. It's cannot insert object error in ActiveX custom Office solution. So you can you can search this while you're looking at this to find it. So the big fix here is delete these .exd files, and um, this will tell you how to find them and fix them. So uh, I think there's several ways to fix it. So you can go through this article, and again, we'll post this link because they didn't give a very good semantic link here, you know, such as cannot insert object, make it short and easy for everyone. Microsoft didn't want to do that. But if you've been having trouble with this, um, rest assured there is a solution. And even though I don't really recommend using ActiveX controls anymore, and I may be in the minority on that, I do believe in solutions and having working spreadsheets. So that is what I'm offering. What Jordan, do you, think, Jordan you, you are not in the minority on ActiveX controls. Thank God. I don't, I don't know anybody who actually likes them. What, what happens is, is, is uh, and it's happened once. It happened once in the last 10 years. I had a situation where the client really wanted to do the spreadsheet a certain way, and, they, and I, the only way I could do it was with ActiveX controls because they wanted to have some text entry boxes. And the forms controls don't include a text entry box, so um, sometimes you just have to do it. That's true. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that four because it's 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 a need to know. You got to deal with it. All right, all right. So um, so can can you briefly say something about um, what is the big deal with ActiveX and why people say leave them alone? Um, it's it's really uh, it, it, technically, I, I, I don't know. I can't explain why, but all all we know is that everybody everybody I know who's I ever tried to why. use them, and I've run into this a number of times, experiences problems. They'll work for a while, and they're more robust and more flexible than forms controls. You have more properties you can set. Uh, you can the VBA behind them, the automation behind them is more flexible. You can. Um, you can you basically you can have these event handlers. Uh, forms control just has you know one macro you call. ActiveX controls have multiple uh, event handlers. So so they they really are a good idea. They're just not implemented well. They don't they don't live well in Excel on a spreadsheet. And so what you what happens is I've seen this time and time again. Um, you'll first start seeing the control mis misbehaving in the sense of the font will get bigger every time you click it. It'll disappear. It'll shoot up to some other part of the spreadsheet. Yeah. The next thing you'll see is the workbook will actually get corrupted. Um, and and when you, not, no nobody wants to have a corrupted workbook, especially now that we're in 2007 and later, corrupted workbooks they're really hard to recover from. Back in the old days, you could just you know there were tools you could buy that would fix them, but now 
there aren't any tools. It is the the the, the tables are the the internal tables are just too complex. So I I, I, I avoid them like the plague. Okay. Yeah, just real quick on that, Oz. I tried to recreate an example. It's hard to do, um, but it worked out really well for my book when I was making an argument against them. But the most common thing I see is that um, uh, they just start jumping all around the screen. There's these times where they'll appear in the upper left corner of the screen, but not for any real reason. You'll place them on the spreadsheet. Sometimes you'll get two of them, but one of them is not clickable. They're right. just fraught with problems, and that's because they are a leftover of... Um, you know, this older Windows style of presenting um, these Windows controls. So new Windows doesn't really use them anymore. They're left over Visual Basic 6.0, which I'm not against because, you know, like Kevin said, you can do a lot with VB, but they don't play, they don't play nicely. Um, and even on user forms, they sometimes don't play nicely, but they do play a lot better on a user form versus a spreadsheet. And the, the last thing, and then, um, yeah, we move on. Um, because I have been tempted to use ActiveX because, like, on my spreadsheet, um, where, you know, if I go out to, say, 60% view, the type gets really small. On ActiveX, you can change the size of your font. Yes. But, and that's where I've been tempted to go ActiveX until I start reading about the problems that they have. And then it's not worth it just to be able to change the size of your font. All right. Um, yeah, let me. I'm going to say something about just controls in general on a spreadsheet. I tend not to use controls on a spreadsheet uh, other than command buttons. Uh, I, here's here's what I do: I, command buttons and for, their form control, controls, and uh, drop down menus using the uh, the validation function, the validation list. Okay, so now I've got I've got buttons to activate things, and I have drop down menus to for a, a selection list. I don't. I you know. Um, Combo boxes, radio buttons, check boxes. I try to stick those on user forms and have the user forms come up. It's it's so much it's so much more aesthetically pleasing, and you can do you can make them look so much better, and you can manage them better too. That's my basic best practices, if you will, in terms of UI design and how to avoid using both ActiveX controls and forms controls. Right. I don't know why uh, why everybody's always hating on ActiveX. <laughs> <laughs> uh, super hero, they, it just doesn't make any sense. All, all you haters out there. <laughs>